All I have to say is this is one of the research articles. As you read through it, you keep on saying, and not so much explicit of terms, oh my gosh. And what really begins to delve into the back of your head is why this research article in particular did not gain more traction. But first, let us bring us to the highlight of the particular graphic off to my right. Bottom left-hand corner, you see the brain scans. You see the pretreatment, and you see basically the passing of time over 36 months. First one, you see that brain tumor as large as a golf ball. 36 months, it was like it was never even there. All right, now, the chart of the graphic above it. You see, for example, you see the um, placebo, and you see the arginine. And now we look at those two lines. That's kind of deceptive because the placebo line is above the L-arginine line. So it gives you an idea of the psychology of graphs. But regardless of that, we want to look at the probability of CNS uh, progression-free survival. You see the red line? You see the, I assume, purple? The purple line over the top? L-arginine. That is one of those oh my gosh moments. Now... Although this is probably the most underpowered title I've ever heard of any particular research. The title per se is just, this is the title of the research. Arginine, an inexpensive oral drug, could enhance radiation therapy for cancer. But I want to pull out an excerpt from that research as well. And as we delve into it and in the amount that was used in a particular uh, trial. Now you have to think about the risk of the trial. The normal uh, uh, paradigm per se is generally that people were looking at, or researchers were looking at reducing the nitric oxide levels that tumors can produce, which makes sense. The gamble here, which was amazing, was they went the other direction. They overloaded the system with nitric oxide. And what happened next was literally, literally amazing. And you're going to ask yourself again, why such incredibly profound research could be the time that we're in and all our focus is in other areas, how profound this research is, the impact it has, where you could actually probably even dare to use the word and breakthrough came about, but basically was silent in the media. So that's what I want to do today is bring it to your attention. Now let's go to that one excerpt reading from the study. Now remember, this is a small trial. And you have to, again, the gamble that they took by increasing nitric oxide levels was really a gamble. But wow, did it pay off to proceed. Moreover, although metastatic cancer usually has a dire prognosis, prognosis, there were some arginine treated patients whose tumors in and outside the brain disappeared, suggesting the possibility of cures. Hold that thought. Let's get right into the research as follows. Again, underpowered title. And I'm so glad I read a little deeper into this research itself. Arginine, an inexpensive oral drug could enhance radiation therapy for cancer. Subtext. Treatment with arginine, one of the amino acid blocks of protein, enhanced the effectiveness of radiation therapy in cancer patients with brain metastasis. 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 Improve a concept, randomized clinical trial. Not a large trial, but the results... Wow, here we go. The study, published in November 5th in its Science Advances, reported the results of administering arginine, just orally, which can be delivered in oral form prior to standard radiation therapy in 31 patients who had brain metastasis. Nearly 78% had complete or partial response in the brain tumors over the follow-up period of up to four years while only 22% of the 32 patients who received a placebo prior to radiotherapy had such a response. I want to go into the full study because some real important excerpts from the full study which will enlighten you or elucidate why this research could have an effect beyond that of just radiotherapy. But to proceed, at the molecular level, quoting, we found that L-arginine impaired cancer cells' ability to repair DNA damage likely explaining the radiosensitization observed in brain metastasis patients. Metastasis. Impaired DNA damage repair may be secondary to transient metabolic suppression. 
We observe that L-arginine limited the capacity of cancer cells to produce the intermediates required for DNA synthesis. Additional mechanisms that may have contributed to the observed impairment in DNA damage repair included S nitrosylation, nitrosylation of DNA damage repair proteins and or the generation of low repairability complex DNA lesions due to the association of ionizing radiation with nitrosative da damage, nitrosative damage. Now, when you read the one paragraph, you could read it verbatim and it may not sink in, but you read it a couple times and you're gonna see different dimensions to the possibility of L-arginine. Now, to go, where to cover the treatment amounts and so on and so forth towards the end. That was used in this particular study in reference to the outcome, but to proceed. Early data, still stick with the full, the full study. Early data suggested that the subcutaneous L-arginine administration inhibits the growth of rat mammary tumors. Furthermore, we observed that L-arginine administration does not alter the amount of radiation-induced DNA damage in tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, indicating that our approach is unlikely to be detrimental for immune cell activity. On the contrary, recent data demonstrated oral L-arginine administration in murine cancer models results in improvement of metabolic fitness of T cells that are crucial for anti-tumor responses. Henceforth, with the one statement that we predicated before we got into the research, or preluded with, can explain a little bit of how that may have occurred. All right, now, let's go back to the public release, which explains it in a little bit more simplified form, and then we're gonna go back into the full study when we get to the dosaging that was used in this particular uh, randomized control trial. In the clinical trial, patients were treated with high dose arginine or placebo oral suspensions an hour before radiotherapy for the brain metastasis. I shouldn't say randomized, but to proceed. Tumors in the brain that represented the spread from primary tumors elsewhere, such as the lungs. But, go back, it was a placebo controlled trial. But, when, here is the thing. The results in the yellow arginine group were so profound, it's almost criminal to think there was a placebo arm. But to proceed. Six months after the course of radiotherapy, 82% of the arginine group had improvement or at least no worsening, or other neurological symptoms compared to 20% of the placebo group. Let me reiterate that because I broke it up. Six months after their course of radiotherapy, 82% of the L-arginine L -arginine group or arginine group had improvement or at least no worsening of the neurological symptoms compared to 20% in the placebo group. Most of the arginine-treated patients who died during the study did so because their cancers had spread elsewhere in the body. Remember, we're picking up on this trial to proceed. Moreover, although metastatic cancer usually has a dire prognosis, prognosis, and we're reiterating the opening quote, there were some arginine-treated patients whose tumors in and outside the brain disappeared, quoting, suggesting the possibility of cures. Evidence from the study and prior research also suggests that arginine can not only directly hobble tumor cells, but also boost the activity of anti-tumor immune cells, quote unquote, from the researcher. Now, this is what they use for the treatment. Now, keep in mind, we are not basically also at the same time too, prescribing or diagnosing or making a recommendation outside your healthcare practitioner. So with those caveats on mind, I'll have all the links on the YouTube channel. So if you want to bring this to your medical practitioner to explore, it'll be available. And I'll link it easy for you. But to proceed, L-arginine was administered at 10 grams per dose, one hour before each fraction of radiation. L-arginine monohydrochloride was purchased from the market. You can see what they have there. Uh, and prepared by the hospital compounding pharmacy as lemon flavoring aqueous suspension to be reconstituted immediately before use to a final volume of 200 milliliters per dose. And for those of us that have tasted a large Indian powder, yes, flavoring is a vital component to that. Now, here we go. The trial, back to the public release. The trial was designed to gauge the effectiveness of, Ar of L-arginine or arginine as a radio sensitizer, obviously for radiation therapy. 
that enhances the effects of radiation treatment. However, the results in arginine's apparent mechanism of action suggest that the amino acid might be useful more broadly as an anti-cancer therapy. To conclude, based on these findings, we should continue to investigate arginine in combination with radiotherapy, but also in combination with chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and even arginine on its own. Quote, end quote. Now, just for example, let's bring this back up real fast. I want to show you the graphic of the brain scan. At the same time, too, just so it sinks in, reference to basically that chart, the probability of CNS progression to free survival. Those are extremely impact and st impactful statements without words. Just example numerically uh, in reference to progression free survival, so on and so forth, and just that picture alone. And when they discovered L arginine may have worked even beyond what their desired outcome was in reference to the research, henceforth, the strong studies that were presented to us as far as those quotes and statements, which those statements were pretty, pretty solid and highly motivated. So L arginine, again, just basic L arginine and hydrochloride at 10 grams, uh, the gamble, a reference to instead of trying to reduce nitric oxide and try to, try to inhibit uh, tumor growth repair that way, just over flooded the system. They found out basically not only enhanced the immune system itself, but also hampered the ability for the tumors themselves to repair the DNA damage done from whatever, immunotherapy, chemotherapy, radiation, and so on and so forth. Still, that is just incredibly, incredibly profound. Yet still, at the same time too, I want to make sure these the researchers here, again, one of the most underpowered, underpowered statistical term, but underpowered titles that you possibly could put on any research article itself with the impact and results being so incredibly profound and so multidimensional on how it can be utilized in a real world setting. That is just freaking phenomenal. But still, just the same as always, before we conclude, gratitude for this research, gratitude to the researchers and the participants as well that took a huge gamble and are going the other way and basically flooding the system with nitric oxide to have to yield these incredibly, incredibly profound uh, results which can benefit just huge segments of our global population as a whole. But again, still just the same. Gratitude, I am humbled for you watching. The links will be there for you as well. And still, You'll read through the study yourself, and it's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. One right after another, after another, you go through each paragraph because it is that. It is that impactful. Again, Ralph signing off. I am humbled you watch. Thank you, thank you. I hope this information could be of use to you, or at least to those which you care for, as well as others inside that, basically, that realm of your community. Again, gratitude, thank you, and I'll catch you all next time. See you then. Bye.